We bless you, Lord. We bless your holy name. The word of God says, where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. And we are more than two, we are more than three tonight. And so, he's already here. Because he's so faithful to come. tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Have your seats. Thank you. The word of God says in Psalm 1 1, it says, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. It says, The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. This is our God. It says that when we come into the assembly, we are to praise him with our whole heart. Praise the Lord with your whole heart in the assembly. Hallelujah. This is the place to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when we are out there, we bless him too. But this is his house. Yeah. And this is the time where we set aside all distractions. I know sometimes we sit and we are thinking about what we're going to do when we leave. Or you're sitting down and you're remembering your day. Stuff going through your mind of what you have to do and all these things, especially at this time. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Especially at this time, it's good to set aside time to be with him. And don't let the season, we Trinidadians, we let the season overwhelm us. But I want to remind us tonight of what this season is about. So the title of my sharing tonight is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. 
You know, in this season of Christmas, It is the celebration of Christ. And I remember growing up, I love Christmas. I know that there are some that say it's a pagan holiday. And they put all sorts of things all up in it. And then they will give you the timeline of when Jesus was born. So they would say that, he was born in March, so he was not born in December. But I want to say, who cares? <laughs> who cares? The point is, there is a time of the year when whether they choose to do it or not, and whether or not they choose to put an X by the mass, the fact of the matter is there is a time of the year. And I believe that this time of the year is a time that God himself has set aside to celebrate him. Because there is something that happens in the atmosphere. I don't know what it is, but I know to myself that it has to be God. Amen. Because I remember growing up, I didn't know what it was. Small little one. And when Christmas Day came, I used to set myself aside, you know, and say, thank you, Jesus. <coughs> After I opened my little dolly, yeah, and my little tea set. God as my witness knows that this is the truth. And I would go by myself. Don't know who taught me to do that. But I went by myself and I said, Lord, thank you. Nine years old, ten years old. Because when I read this story, and I read it, and I saw that Jesus came on this earth. And listen, they always used to have me in the place. I don't know why, because I was a sort of a little person, kind of restricted by myself. I would sit and I would just watch. That was just me. That's just the Lord, how he made me. I would sit and I would just observe everything. So they called me quiet and reserved. But they didn't know what was in me all the time. Because I have a way I would sit and I would watch. That's just the personality. You know, we have all the different colors, eh? Each and every single one of us, beautiful in their own way. All the colors of God. And so I would sit and I would observe and they would say that my name is, my second name is Andrea. So they would say that Andrea is quiet. So every time it have the nativity play, guess who they call in to be Mary? <laughs> and they would point me out and I would be in the corner there and they would say, let Andrea be Mary. She would suit the part. So I played Mary about three times. <laughs> Even in secondary school, I was Mary. <laughs> but it did something for me as a child. Because I was able now to understand the scripture. And I was able now to understand what God did. And I was amazed. And you see, at Christmas time, celebration of Christ, we need to have a little revival in our minds of what Jesus did. Not just a season, but what Jesus did. Because sometimes we take the time for granted. 
But we need to sit and think about it. Awesome. As I was standing there praising the Lord, he just wants the scripture again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting And that is a scripture that we hear about all the time. It's ever in the faces of the world. That is one scripture I think everybody could quote. Whether they believe God or not, they hear that scripture. And I remember growing up and every single preacher I heard on the radio, on the TV, would say that scripture. And that scripture reflects Emmanuel, God with us. You see, in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, turn to it. Turn to it because I know some of us are a little tired, you know, from your day understand so get a little involved here get the hands inside the pages a little bit Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 tell me when you're there everybody there yeah it says therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God had promised in Isaiah 7 that there was coming a child who would be God with us. And he tells us here that Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy. God is with us through Jesus. You see, in Matthew 1.23, this prophecy was fulfilled. Turn to Matthew 1.23. So we are seeing it in the Old Testament. And here now we are seeing it coming to pass in the New Testament. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To know that God is with us, I believe it is the greatest blessing there is. That's the comfort that David knew in Psalm 23, guys. When he said, yea, he said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. He knew he could face anything, even death, because God is with him. This is Christmas, the celebration of Christ. And it is good to celebrate Christ. And the meaning of Christ is the anointed one. This is, the one. this is one of the holidays that most of the world celebrate all at the same time. Have you considered? And that is the blessing we celebrate at Christmas that God the Son came to earth to be with us. Just as our passage said before. Now remember last week, for those who were here, I told you of a Christmas song I love dearly. Remember? Hark the herald angels sing. But what is a herald angel? 
A herald angel is an angel that intermediary between God and mankind that relates important news to humanity about upcoming events in the Bible. And in the Bible, angels herald or announce the birth of Jesus Christ. So in Luke 2, we see that heralding angels making a divine proclamation. And I want us to turn to Luke 2. Because we need to see that when divinity came to dwell with man, it, is, it was not a simple thing. We need to see the announcement of what happened. It was a celebration. It wasn't, he didn't come quietly. Just quietly. But there was a rejoicing in the heavenlies. So let's see. We are starting from verse 7. And it says, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I remember this, you know, sitting down with the little dolly. And they would wrap up the dolly. One set of clothes. And I'm sitting down there. Swaddling clothes. <laughs> but this wasn't a dolly. This was the savior of the world. Coming in our space. Listen. Divinity met us. And they were in the same country. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. How much imagination you all have? How much? So imagine and picture this because we have to imagine, but this is something that really happened. And they were in the same country where Jesus was born. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. They're minding their own business. They don't know what's going on. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Now, could you imagine that there in the field, and an angel of the Lord came to them there. And then the glory of the Lord shone around them, bright about them. Obviously, we want to know what is going on. And they became so afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day. As you sit. Tending your flock. For unto you is born this day. In the city of David our savior. Which is Christ the Lord. The anointed one. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, so after they said all of this to the shepherds, suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill toward all men. And it came to pass that as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste 
and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They went and they spoke of it. They went and they spoke of what happened. They went and they spoke about how they saw the multitude. Guys, you know what is a multitude? I believe the whole sky. The whole sky had angels. It appeared. Listen, they appeared. The whole sky, a multitude. A multitude is a host. So don't, don't take the scripture so lightly of what happened. You see, sometimes we read it and it just becomes ordinary. But it is not ordinary. What happened there? A multitude of angels. Listen, heaven rejoiced of what was going to take place, of what is happening. That mankind has a savior. A savior came. The anointed Christ came on earth. And there was a multitude, a host of angels in the sky. And they started to praise God. And they started to worship God. And they said, glory to God in the highest. Heaven was praising God. They didn't wait for anybody else to praise God. They praised God because divinity came. Jesus came on the scene. The creator met creation. The creator came down. The one who spoke. It says in John, the word became flesh and dwelt among man. And they beheld him. Listen, this is exactly what took place. The word of God came. And immediately there was a rejoicing. A rejoicing in the heavens. It says, and the shepherds returned glorifying. And praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. The first verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I'm going to say it again. It says, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the newborn King, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, Joyful all ye nations rise, Joy the triumph of the skies, with angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. It says, but Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, Hail incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus, our, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that is the blessing we celebrate at Christmas time, that God the Son came to earth to be with us, just as our passage for today is. You see, he has not turned against us. He's not out to destroy us. For God so loved this world, people, that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus wants to save us. He came to us that day in Bethlehem for the sole objective, to save mankind from all the works of the evil one. Jesus is working with us. He has a plan for us. Jesus, Emmanuel. Amen. And I read something today. 
I read something today. And it's about a young girl who died. It bothered me. It bothered me because she could have gotten help. Because Emmanuel is here. Jesus is here. The people of God is here. Was it that her mother did not know? Was it that that demon that took her life, nobody was there to help her? And the mother cried out of the people that she went to. I sat down today and I said, Lord, she could have gotten help. Because Jesus came to destroy all the works of the enemy. All. Not some, but all. And I'm going to proclaim this. Jesus is the one that you run to. You don't run to a spiritual doctor. You're not running to no pundit. I may be stoned, fine. Come to Jesus. He is your help. Find a church that knows the name of Jesus. His name is above every name. There is no name that is above his. And she could have gotten help. So I speak this abroad. Come into the house of the Lord and get delivered. Get delivered. Bring your family. Bring the people that need to know Jesus. For he is the truth. And he is the life. You see, when the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, He saved us. He came down to save us. You see, the intent of the Lord is to dwell with us. In Genesis, the Father would walk in Eden with Adam. He came and he dwelt with them, Adam and Eve. And it's the same thing that he has done when he came on this earth to dwell with man. Because in Genesis chapter 6, I'm going to read this again. God beheld all the evil of mankind in the early days of the world. And one of the most revealing and convicting verses in the scriptures. In Genesis 6, 5, I just read it, it says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Evil. Man's heart only thinking evil. It is quite a convicting description of the hearts of men. Every intent 
of the thoughts of his heart was evil. And as a result, God judged the world and destroyed most of mankind through the flood. But since then, what have we had? Still more wars, more immorality, more perversion, and more evil. So God, so is God against us? In Romans 1, 18 to 32, it says, don't turn. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You see, when we know the truth and we decide to still walk in unrighteousness, God holds us accountable and also for those who sees the reality of God and continues to deny him. But God has given us a choice. And so God came down to earth personally in Jesus to save us. He said in John 3, 17, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So God wants to save mankind. He still has a plan for mankind. He is with us. And God's plan always, remember this, God's plan always is to save the world through the knowledge and acceptance of Jesus Christ in our hearts. Now in Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Now we're going to just go through some things and a background of why he said so in this verse. Because remember that this is the Old Testament. Now if we study the passage in Isaiah that this quote comes from, you can see the historical background of it. So when you go home, you read it. Right? There were two kings who had invaded the land of Judah. And the heart of Ahaz, the king of Israel, and the hearts of his people shook, it says, as the trees of the forest shake with the wind. They were frightened. They were very fearful. But God told him through Isaiah the prophet, he said, do not be faint-hearted because of these two stubs of smoldering firebrands. God told Ahaz that he had a plan that there would be a virgin who would have a child named Emmanuel, God with us, and that by the time this child knew enough to refuse evil and choose good, that the lands of these kings would be forsaken. You see, these invading kings looked fearsome to Ahaz, but God was with him, and he had a bigger plan that he could trust in. He wanted Ahaz and Judah to fear him and not those smoking firebrands. Who were invading them, God was with them. So even so, the same thing is true today. The way the world is going on today, there is so much turmoil and confusion, nationally and internationally, between governments, politicians and rulers. You see, Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un and Jerusalem and the Palestinians and China. What about Venezuela and Guyana? Right on our doorstep. We're hearing all these things. And we're thinking, will there be war between the US and Russia or China? You see how people asking this question, war. There is so much turmoil, and there's so much fear. But this passage in Isaiah should cause us to step back and remember. This world is not in uncontrollable circumstances. God is with us. Just like in the days of King Ahaz in Jerusalem, God has a plan for this world. 
You see this Bible? It is the blueprint of what will happen. And he's working it out. And no one can stop it. Because the Bible says these things will happen. For there will be wars and rumors of wars. But no leader could stop what God is doing. No leader could do that. The Lord says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You see, when these things are happening and things are being shaken, the word of God talks about what can be shaken will be shaken. But hear what? When things are being shaken in your life, in my life, in the world, the Lord wants us to pay attention. It is not just happening. These things don't just happen. The Lord is in control of everything. And I want us to look at it in a different perspective tonight. The Lord is in control. Nothing happens out of his hand. No hurricane, no whirlwind, nothing. Everything happens. And he knows what is taking place. He knows what is going on. So all this turmoil that is taking place, what does the church do? When we see all this turmoil happening in the physical, we have a God with us. And not only that, we step back and we flip our minds to where we are supposed to be with him in the spirit. The word of God says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. So when these things are taking place, the church now, the church now, God says that my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Go back to the spiritual. Go back to the place where we belong. Listen to me, people. I did not have this written down. Make sure that you are in the place where you're supposed to be. Because that is the place of our strength in this time. So that God would be with us. We are not to complain like everybody else. We are not to be fearful like everybody else. We are not to wonder what is going to happen like everybody else. We are not to be quivering like Ahaz and wondering what is taking place. We have the word of God. And we see that the Lord has conquered. We see that the Lord has conquered the enemy. Because the Lord is with his people. And the Lord is in his church. And the word of God says, I will build my church. And I know sometimes we see the church and we want to know what is going on. But hear what? God has a people 
that he hides. He has a people that he prepares. He doesn't just build and it falls down. When the Lord is building, he builds strong. And listen to me. When you see a building a foundation, the amount of mess takes place with concrete and all sorts of things, and everything looks messy. But when you put on the steel, and when you see you put on that concrete, and you level off, listen to me, the house stands. God is building his church at this point in time. And there are people of God that the Lord is with. Emmanuel is with us. He knows how to build us. He knows how to make his people strong. And in, this, and in his might, he knows how to do it. And because he's with us, we are a strong people. And because we are strong, we will stand. In this time that we are going in, in 2024, ensure that you have Emmanuel. Ensure that he's with you. Ensure that you are not just coming to church because you're coming to church. Ensure that you're not doing things just for the eyes of men. Ensure that your heart is built on God. Ensure that he is with you. Ensure that you could stand anything that comes. Ensure that when you stand, and even if you don't feel him, you stand. Because if you go on your feelings at this time, you would be in a mess. If you go on what you feel, what your mind say, you would be in a mess. If you go with what you are seeing on the internet and on the news, your mind is going to be in a mess. Ensure that you are standing on God. Ensure you are standing with God. And ensure that Emmanuel is with you. Spend your time with him. Cultivate your time with him. With all our celebration, I love to celebrate Christmas. They would say at home, I'm a Christmas bug. Because I love him. Because everything that I do, I think about celebrating him. And rejoicing that he came. But don't let these things distract you. Don't let anything distract your mind. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going, whether you're in work, whether you're out of work, whether you're in church, whether you're out of church doing something, ensure that you are with him. When Jesus came, there are many who didn't realize that God was with them. And even the disciples and all asked questions. And I said this verse last week, but I'm going to say it again. They did not recognize. So much so. Sometimes the Lord is right where you are and you don't recognize him. 
Many times he's in the midst of our situations in our life. And we don't recognize that he did. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He doesn't walk away from us. He does not leave us. He stays with us. Always. Would you remember that? Because I have had situations in my life. Where I did not feel God, you know. I did not feel him there. And it was a lot of turmoil. It was a lot that was taking place. And to the point where I really felt numb. I don't know if anybody here could relate of that numb feeling. Where you just feel numb. And you don't feel him there. But it doesn't matter whether or not you feel him or you don't feel him. He stays with us. And I have learned to live in the desert. I have learned to live in that space. And I realized that the other day. That certain things just don't affect me the way that they used to long ago. It just doesn't. It's like I, I just don't need. I mean, I love when I feel him. I love when I feel his presence. But even if I don't feel God's presence, I could still function. I can still function because I know that he's there. I know that he's with me. And people, I want to tell you something. Get into that space. Get into that space. Because I believe that every Christian goes through that. But I didn't know. You know, sometimes... When you're going through struggles in your life, sometimes everything you forget, you know. It's like you just forget even the word you're forgetting. Because the stress and the struggle is so much that all you're feeling is feeling. <laughs> That's all you're feeling, feeling. You can't think. You can't function because it's everything that's squeezing you. And I literally learned to just stay there and just believe God. And the only thing that kept me was because I love him. I would feel a love inside. And I would say, Lord, no matter what, I love you. And I'm moving. I have nowhere to go. I really don't have anywhere to go. And Emmanuel was right with me. He never left me. And I want to say tonight... Emmanuel, God with us, is here. He's here. Even Jesus' disciples didn't realize who he was. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you? And yet you have not come to know me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how can you say, show us the Father? And Jesus was right there with them. Do you want 
to know what God is like? Look at Jesus. Hebrews 1, 3 says he is the exact representation of his nature. God with us. If you want to know if God controls the weather, just watch Jesus calm the storm on the sea. If you want to know if God is stronger than demonic powers, watch the demons fall at Jesus' feet and beg to be cast into swine. God with us. Jesus, God came to earth. And if you want to know what God thinks about something, see what Jesus said about it. You want to know what God really says? It takes to get to heaven. Just listen to Jesus tell a very religious man in John 3, you must be born again. You want to know whether God would send anybody to hell? Listen to Jesus in Matthew 10. Fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You want to know what God thinks about marriage? Look at what Jesus said in Matthew 19. He who created them from the beginning made them male and female. And said for this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. What God has joined together, let no man separate. I am saying all of this because Jesus came and taught us how to live. What does God think about the holiness of his church? Just watch Jesus turn over the tables and clear the compromisers out of his temple with a whip. You want to know what God thinks about our busyness? Just listen to Jesus tell Martha that all her chores weren't the most important thing. But just sitting at his feet was. And if you want to know how seriously God takes sin, just look at Jesus. God who took it seriously enough to be tortured and die on a cross, paying for our sins in the body. That is what God thinks of sin. And if you want to know if he will really forgive you, then hear him tell the adulterous woman, he said, neither do I condemn you. No, go. Go and sin no more. And if you want to know God, look to Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. As Colossians 2.9 says, in him, in him the fullness of deity dwells. In bodily form, you see, God literally, physically came into this world in the person of Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, God with us. But even more than that, when we receive Jesus Christ personally as our Lord and Savior, then God is with us. Jesus, God is literally in us when we are saved. He comes to dwell in us in us. Second Corinthians 13 5 says, test yourself to see if you are in the faith. It says, examine yourselves or do you not recognize this about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test. Here Paul challenges us to test ourselves as to whether we are really Christians at this test. Is Jesus Christ in you? Because that is what a real Christian is. God is with us. He's in us, in our lives, when we are saved. Ephesians 1.13 is a verse you need to learn and memorize, people. It says, in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed. We are all sealed in him 
with the Holy Spirit of promise. When we become saved. Not when you're unsaved. When you become saved. I am stressing that. Because the world says something different to us. But when you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes and he dwells with us. This verse tells us that when we hear the message of Jesus and believe it in our hearts, God's Holy Spirit comes into our lives and seals us. This is like a seal. That is to put on something to indicate that it belongs to the owner. In the same way, this verse says that God puts his seal, his Holy Spirit on you when you are saved. Ephesians 4.30 goes on to tell us that the Holy Spirit seals us to the day of redemption, you know. God himself has put his seal on us, people, and nothing could break it. Nothing can break the seal. The seal of God's Holy Spirit on your heart. Jesus said, no one shall pluck them out of my hand. But what this verse also tells us is that when we are saved and sealed, God's Holy Spirit comes into our life. God is now with us literally. He's in our life through faith in Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. The word of God says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have from God. God's Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He's God with us. And in Romans 8, 15 says, you have received a spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. So when the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Jesus Christ, comes into our life, he gives us that confidence that God is our Father and he is with us. God is with us through the Holy Spirit because of our faith in Jesus. It seems to me that the Lord wants to remind us of these things before we get into 2024. He wants to seal it in our minds. He wants to set it in there so we will not be moved by anything. You are not to say to yourself, that through the circumstances in my life, God has left me. He is not with me anymore. Because the enemy has a way of saying these things, you know. The Lord has left you. And you feel condemned. But the Lord does not want us in that place. He doesn't want us in that place. So... I want us to stand this evening. The Lord says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This verse says that we have that access to Jesus. So we could come boldly before him. And at this time at Christmas time, let us be reminded of what God did for us. You're spending time with your family, be reminded. Celebrate him. Take time to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Lord, for coming and giving us salvation. 
thank you, Lord, that you came on this earth and you did not leave us prey to the enemy. But because of who you are and because of your love, that you so loved, you didn't wait for us to love you. You came even though this world did not love you. This is love. He said, love is when you lay down your life for your friends. He said, I am your friend. He has literally made us his friend. That we could come boldly before the throne of grace. So bow your heads. Is there anyone here that has never received Christ in their heart? And you would like to do that this evening. You would like to receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And is there anyone here that wants to rededicate their life to God? It is coming down to the end of 2023. We have one more Friday. But I want to ask you to come down. Only the ones who would like to receive Jesus. Come. Come. Jesus is calling. He has come to save and he has come to redeem and to save us from sin and from damnation. Is there anyone? And if there is no one tonight, Father, I lift your people before you. And Father, Lord, tonight we are thankful. We are thankful to you, Lord, that we have you and that you are with us. We are thankful to you, Lord, that you stayed with us through this year. struggles that we've been through you've been with us and you did not leave us nor forsake us but you gave us the strength to go through thank you Lord thank you Lord that divinity came and dwelt among men what a great salvation we have we have hope. I want to say that mankind have hope. We have hope because of Jesus. No one should be lost. Accept him. Accept him into your heart. I speak over the internet. And to those who hear my voice, accept him into your heart. You have hope. He has given us hope. You don't have to let the enemy overtake you. Come to Jesus. And on top of it, he gives you power. When you become his child, he gives you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the works of the enemy. He didn't leave it all to himself. He shares it with us. 
We have hope. And there is one, and I thank you, Lord. Heaven is rejoicing. There is a rejoicing that is taking place because of you. Because of you. You know what Jesus did? All of this sin was laid on Jesus. That is the value of a soul. Maybe I need to preach a message like that, the value of a soul. Because the whole world, the whole sin, past the present, was laid on Jesus. So that we might be saved. And I'm happy that you did it before you close your eyes. I'm happy that you did it and you came back. So dear Lord Jesus, say it. I come before you and I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that you are the only one that can save my life, that can save my soul. And so Lord, I repent of all my sin past, Lord, and present. And Father, Lord, I know that you would forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, from my sin. Wash me clean, that though I may be a scarlet, help me to be as white as snow. And though I may be as crimson, help me to be as wool. Father, Lord, let your blood cover me and wash me and cleanse me. And Father, from today, I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, write his name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, I lift him into your presence. I lift him, Father God, to the very palm of your hands. Father, Lord, take hold of him, Father, to his front, to his sides, oh God. And I pray, Father, Lord, that you would hug him, Lord. Hug him in the palm of your hands and keep him, Father, Lord, from the cold fear of evil. Father, I pray, oh Lord Jesus, that you will give him such a desire for your word, that your word, Father, Lord, would be in his mind and in his heart, and he will be converted to you. And Father, with these lips, he would speak of you to his family. He would speak, O oh Lord, of your goodness and of your cleansing power in his life. Father God, I give you thanks and praise. Father Lord, I bless you tonight, and we rejoice, O oh Lord God. And if there is anyone that is on the internet, that have said this prayer, call the office, write an email, say that you have received Jesus tonight, and there will be people who will guide you and speak to you and guide you into your salvation. Hallelujah. And this young man here behind you, he will counsel you. Hallelujah. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel, hallelujah, hallelujah, let's sing.
You may be seated. Hallelujah. Question. Are you confident that you are ready to go to heaven? The churches of Revelation were confident that they were, but they were not. Five out of the seven churches were out of the will of God and were not even aware of it. This could very well be our predicament today. God's perspective is often quite different from man's, says Dr. Austin Nibook in his brand new seven-part book series on Jesus' letters to these churches. They present the wisdom, insight, and revelation of Jesus' counsel to these churches and teach us how to apply them to our own lives. If you truly desire to be right with God and to secure your eternity with Him in heaven, get this seven-part book series now. Available online at Amazon.com or call 235-4TCC. That's 235-4822 to place your order. Oh 